Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> no. Time for bladder check. Check. So it's a show? It's a lifestyle. It's a religion. <laughs> My emotions! My emotions! I'm still French. Ouais, c'est pas faux. I'm a woman, Mary. I can be as contrary as I choose. Non, moi je crois qu'il faut que vous arrêtiez d'essayer de dire des trucs. Hello, hi, I'm Laura. I'm gonna watch my Hero Academia season 2, episode 1. If you want to see my reaction videos about all of the episodes of the season 1, I'm gonna put the links, you know, into the eye for the playlist, for the previous episodes, and also for other playlists, for other animes that I'm reacting to just in case you can be interested by that. Today, we are beginning the season two. I hope that I'm gonna have the time to watch four episodes today. It would be great. Not only, you know, to be back with this anime, to be put, you know, into the new context for this season two, what they're gonna do, are they really gonna continue? Just after what happened, you know, during the season one, or are we gonna have a time jump or something like that? Like for me, they need one episode to put the new context, to create the new story, you know, what is gonna be the real big issue for Deku for this season. You know, the season one, it was mostly about him getting into the, this school, you know, training out to be accepted into this school, the test to be accepted into this school, the first lessons also that he received into it and the first attack that he had into it and that was, you know, that first attack, now I'm really seeing it as an introduction of really the big villains, the big things, the big enemies that Deku and his friends are gonna fight during these future seasons, maybe. Oh, and I want to say it, when I edited the last episode, I understood something, you know, a little new thing in addition of all of the things that we learned during the previous episode about the fact that this League of Villains attacked right there because they had information through the schedule that they managed to steal. But I think still now that they have a spy inside of the school, maybe someone close to our might because they have information about the fact that it's beginning to be weaker and because we discovered that, okay, right there we had the League of Villains but it was more, you know, a group that the real villains, the real enemies, the real group of enemies used as a facade, you know, as, you know, to, to be the image of, in fact, the real group, the real enemies and same, you know, for that villain with all of the art, <laughs> I'm looking at it right there because I have his name right there, right there, Tomura. I think that it's the same, you know, is used by the real villains, the real enemies, the real guys group with against our might. And what I learned during the editing of the previous episode, and I didn't pay enough attention about it, you know, during the previous episode, it the fact that during this moment, you know, when Tomura, he talked with the screen, he was not talking only with one person, he was talking with two persons. Someone, I don't know if it was the master or not, but you know, it was two persons and one of these persons was the one who created Nomu, who gave to Nomu all of this power, so Nomu is gonna be the anti all might, all of that. But really, we had two persons right there, and one of these persons said something, you know, which is making me think that it's people who are high placed, maybe into the government, maybe into the police, or maybe into the, the superheroes, you know, like the fact that we didn't see their faces, the fact that they want to hide so much behind the League of Villains, behind Tomura, like they want to do stuff like that in a sneaky way. And I have this impression that we have a spy also inside. Maybe it's one of these two guys. And yes, it's making me think that maybe in fact this spy and one of these two guys, if not these two guys, Maybe it's one or two heroes, super heroes. And it would go also with my impression that 
not everything is all black or all white like okay into this world we have the heroes and the villains and you know it's an universe which is made for now or at least which is presented for now like it's that easy you know to be categorized heroes or villains I'm not like that you know into real life and also when I watch shows and animes to think that someone is all perfect or all bad no <laughs> we have nuances and it's not that easy so you know because of that also because I have that way of thinking of stuff it's going with my impression that we have a spy and maybe it's one or two of these guys and maybe there are heroes in fact and also you know during the season one during the first episode I remember that when the first villain appeared you know that attack into the street and all I asked that question how a villain is beginning to be a villain you know like at first it's just someone with powers like all of these guys so why this one is deciding to to go as a villain you know to be someone bad okay some of them can have reasons like they don't have money so they need to steal or really they want to be malicious you know something like that you know it can be financial reasons it can be I was gonna say mood <laughs> reasons, like just they want to do bad stuff. But can it be possible also that we have also other stuff going on right there? You know, I had that thought also remembering that the government is categorizing all of them, you know, when they are kids according to their powers. In Europe, in our history, we have a certain, you know, like, thing with categorizing people according to who they are, you know, you are defining them by something and you are categorizing them by something. So because of that, you're going to say that this person is going to go wrong or this person is going to go good, you know, just because you categorized that person at first. So you have cliches about that person. And you know you are determining in advance what the future of that person is going to be and all like in Europe and maybe also in other continents you know countries and stuff like that but in our past history we lived some rough stuff you know <laughs> with that with categorizing people and doing bad stuff with this information so maybe because of that also when Deku talked about it, you know, the fact that he was categorized as someone with no powers and after that he wants, you know, to change that and you have the right to do it once and that's all. When it happened, you know, into the anime, I was like, hmm, that's weird, but I didn't think about it twice. Now, you know, having this idea in mind, the fact that villains are not born villains, you know, they are becoming villains because of financial reasons, because of mood reasons or maybe also they are pushed, you know, to be villains like, I don't know I'm beginning to be like, maybe since the beginning, you know, when they had their powers when they were young maybe they were judged dangerous and because of that, you know, the government um, you know, they were paying more attention to them and it forced them it pushed them to be villains I don't know see I'm I don't this idea I want to work on it like <laughs> there is something right there maybe I just thought of something with how I just explained to you my thoughts I just said one sentence I just said they are pushed to be villains. Maybe they need villains. Do you understand what I mean? In a world like that, if you want to have heroes, you need villains. Do you understand what I mean? Like, if you want to, to have heroes like that, representing what is right and all, you need to have villains. Can it be possible that some of them, not all of them, but some of these villains, they are pushed to be villains because these heroes, they need villains to fight. Do you understand my logic right there? 
I don't know, it's really like just right now when I said that, that you know, it's a little like in other stories, I'm looking at my books and stuff like that. When they are creating situations just for people to keep up, to keep fighting and all. You know, I'm thinking, for example, of Hunger Games and stuff like that. Can it be possible right now? But for what purpose at the end? They are not at war, you know, like they don't need to create that drama. I don't know, I just had that thought, uh, I'm gonna keep it in mind uh, a little. It's not a theory in which I believe at 100% because I just had it, but uh, maybe I can work on it, you know, maybe there is something right there. For now it's a 2% theory, but maybe working on it and maybe with other information, so uh, I'm gonna keep it in mind. <laughs> All of that! to say that we learned a lot during the previous episodes and the end of the season 1. I have some information right there about this group. I want to discover more about them for sure. I want to discover more about the villain that we discovered during the post credit scene of the last episode of the season 1. And yes, I want to discover what Deku is going to do during this season, like what is going to be his main narrative arc for this season. And I think that with four episodes, if I have the time to watch them today, I'm going to have that, you know, during these four episodes. Yes. Okay, I'm going to stop this intro right there. Remember that if you want to have my Patreon on which you can have these episodes earlier, we have four. Four episodes of advance on my Patreon, which means two weeks, two weeks of advance on Patreon. We've extended our full action part. I put a lot of full action part for my Raw Academia and I'm saying it each time, no matter what, extended reaction part are more interesting because I'm not forced to cut each five seconds, to play with opacity, to change the screen, all of that. And it's the best way to support me. I'm a little reactor, as you can see right now on YouTube and YouTube and me, um, You know, it's going, it's living, it's going, it's living. April, it was the worst that I never lived with YouTube. Like, it was the worst possible. It's beginning to be a little better. But you know, a little better after being so, so worst. I just hope, you know, that it's going to continue to, to be good. So it's just going to return to normal. So that's why I'm telling you that if you want to support me, it's on my Patreon and it can be really helpful, you know, for this month, you know, May, June, it can really help me and it can balance a little what YouTube is making me during these last weeks. Making me suffer. I forgot to put the, the verb. <laughs> okay, let's go for this episode. <laughs> We are back with that intro. Mm. When we met that first villain, that's when I asked how villains are beginning to be villains. I love you, Deku! We are seeing something which is gonna happen during this season? And watch this intro without having any spoiler. Now I know you guys. You write this letter to a sensei who knows that you can transfer your power. 
The one who gave you this power? To protect people who are weak. The sensei knows about this. Toshinori Yagi? That's your real name? We never learned his real name. Toshinori. Oh, it's the first time that we have his real name. Tomura. I don't like that idea of registering like that and categorizing people like that so. You are just obeying to others. We need to understand that. I said it, it's a little weird also for all of these people to decide all together to obey all right now. Mm. You know what she said about his father? I don't think that one of these guys you know that we heard the voice of is one of his, his father, but... No, you intervened plenty of time. All of you. That was cool. So pressure that you have on your shoulder and that you put even more into your shoulders. I want that. <laughs> I love you. What about his powers? You know, we learned that he has issues with his eyes now and his powers are related to his eyes. Just continue the normal things. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> okay! In a world like that, in a universe like that, it's really hard. Oh, 
Come on, Deku. I'm sure you can do it also. I like him! Okay, he's screaming a lot, but I like him. He's made to be annoying. I have the right to be annoyed. <laughs> Mm. I hope that show is gonna be also. <laughs> what? What is happening to you? <laughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> it's a fighter also, you know. She's not just that sweet girl. It's a good reason also. Maybe you don't know enough about her. Hmm. You want him to win? Cool. I was right. This first episode presented us the main narrative out of the season. Again, I prefer the ending credit song. It's a lot about the girls. A lot about Ochako. Is it gonna be the same for all episodes or just this one because this one was named after her? Bon. No! No preview! Okay. Was waiting to see if we had a post credit scene. Maybe about that villain that we saw during the post credit scene of the last episode of the season 1. Okay, so yes, I was right. This episode 1 was there to put the context for this season 2 and the main narrative arc. For des coups, it's gonna be about this sports festival and the fact that All Might wants to help Deku to win it, to present himself to the world at least during it. That's gonna be something and really I mean it because first we're gonna have a lot of time to train for Deku to be good enough and all. We can see that other students are beginning to wonder about what is happening like at the end of the last season, Deku said the truth to Katsuki, but Katsuki didn't believe him. But we saw that after the attack, Katsuki was looking, you know, at the nursery, like where Deku was. And, you know, like he was wondering about what was happening. So maybe he guessed what really happened. Two 
even before the attack and all, she already guessed what was happening, at least she was wondering about it. Ida remembers it right there. He talked about it with Ochako. So really the students are beginning to connect the dots. We know that the villains talked also about Deku, about what happened during the attack. You know, I'm seeing all of that like, okay, Deku right there is gonna train to, to fight, to win, maybe during also the sports festival. But before that, he's gonna train in front of everyone. I'm a little afraid about the fact that revealing that now he has all might power, he can't reveal that. He's gonna reveal something else. He's gonna reveal that he has a big power, which is like all might, but it's not all might power. He can't reveal that it's all might power. But you know, with what the, the students, the villains, like all of them, they were already thinking about, Maybe they're gonna connect the dust and they're gonna understand that. And the villains, maybe they already know that, in fact. I have the impression that they have a lot of information about All Might. Right there, All Might, he wrote that letter to his sensei, his teacher, former teacher, who knows about his condition. We learned his name into this letter, you know, the real name of All Might. I'm more thinking about the fact that it's a real danger, the fact that All Might wrote all of that. Somewhere there is a proof, a written proof of all of that. Of the fact that All Might can transfer his power, that he already did it to one of his students. I don't think that he said his name, but that he transferred it to one of his students that is beginning to be weaker, like. It's right hand, it's a proof. If that proof, you know, is falling into the wrong hands, I don't think that his sensei, I mean, can betray him because I imagine that for All Might to trust that much someone, one of his former teacher, you know, I'm almost wondering maybe this guy, this former teacher gave him All Might's power. You know that I want to know how it happened for All Might who gave him this power, how it happened, the fact that he has this appearance, you know, when he's normal, it's making me wonder about a lot of things, so maybe it was this teacher, this former teacher? I don't know, but yes, a lot of them are wondering about what is happening with Deku, so maybe they're gonna keep an eye on him, you know, during all of the training before the festival, they all want to participate, for sure. Ochako, that was a surprise, you know, to see her reacting like that. But at the same time, I love that because during all of the season one, she was really presented as a sweet girl, always nice, always sweet, who saved Deku, you know, sometimes, but each time still she was a little weak or she was hesitating, she had doubts, she was not really confident and all. So right there to see her like that, like someone wants to do stuff and all, it was really cool because I don't want her to be presented, you know, as a naive and just sweet girl. So it's cool, you know, if the writers, they are giving her something more. To have that flashback with her as a kid, that was so sweet. And that's a good reason also to the fact that she wants to be a superhero to help her parents to have money. And even just, you know, she wants to be a superhero for having money. Like maybe you just had a bad life, like you were not rich and you, you want to have money. So you're not going to be worried about it for the rest of your life. And yes, maybe. <laughs> Maybe uh, da, da, da. just that you know, it's something that everyone can understand. And she said something like, "For Deku and Ida, it's more honorable their reasons to fight. I mean, to to want to be an hero. Ida, it's because of the fact that he wants to do like his family, like his brother. Is it really honorable? Like, it's a good reason for sure, and." You know, it's because he wants to make 
his family proud and he admires his brother that much and all but someone else could say that it's also because maybe he was a little jealous of his brother and you just want to be like him or better than him do you understand what I mean? like there is no honorable reason and bad reason it's just your reason and as long as you can justify it you know and it's making sense for you and it's not something illegal and it's not something really bad it's your reason like uh, no no it didn't shock me at all and for sure with this flashback we, we saw that she was just a sweet girl who wanted to help his dad and his dad he wants you to have your dream but her dream is to help you to help her dad he wasn't taking that little voice because it was sweet she was so sweet as a kid like Deku was so sweet as a kid oh I want to see Ida as a kid <laughs> I want to see if he already had that personality or not. For this attack, by asking questions about it, I mean, you know, all of the adults right there, we saw them talking about it. You're asking questions about it, but not enough in my opinion. Oh, and I didn't like what Almighty said. Like, something that he said at some point, it implied that you have, I mean, that people can have villain's reasons to act like just like that like i said it in true i'm not functioning like that in life and I'm, i think that this universe this world doesn't have that rule about the fact that you are born a hero or you are born a villain no none of them is born as a villain they are born with powers and what is interesting is to understand how can they become villains at some point. Maybe because of financial reasons, maybe because of mood reasons, you know, because they have a lot of anger and they want to destroy things and all. But, uh, you know, all of their reasons to be angry that much, they're going to be different. And they can be based on financial situations and bad situations at their Homes and stuff like that, but I said it during the intro. I'm beginning to wonder about that thing, you know, about registering the powers and maybe the government classifying some people as dangerous and in a way they are pushing these people to become villains. So, right there, the fact that they said that Tomura and the other one they are not registered like that. You know, they said that it was something bad. I said it, I'm not okay with being registered like that, so... Again, in Europe history, to register people like that and to use these informations after that to do bad stuff uh, because of these informations with which you registered people, in fact, you are categorizing people and in fact, you, uh, you have cliches about some of them, some of these categories and because of that you are treating them differently and other stuff like that like maybe it's not what they are doing but because of Europe history and just because also I'm wondering about what is happening right there I'm beginning to think that it's an important information I can imagine that uh, the worst case scenario with that it would be to do something like that you know and it can become one of my theories i'm not saying that i believe into it at 100 percent but i have it in mind i want to keep it in mind all right he has only one hour now for me it's not even enough for a class lesson aizawa is back that's great but i want to have information about his powers can he use his powers again I don't think so. I think that maybe we can have something like he can't use them now or not that much or something changed. We'll see. Okay, I'm gonna watch three more episodes today if I have the time. That's gonna be great. For you, it's gonna be in another video or if you are watching this on YouTube and you are subscribing right now to my Patreon, you can already have the three videos you know the three next videos the three next episodes 
Like it's really like that, you know, Patreon, they have four episodes of Advance. It's like that, so if you want, on my Patreon, you can jump on it and you can binge watch like that all of these reaction videos. It's all for you for this video and it's all for me for now, so bye for now. Bye. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Right. <laughs>